Uh, tonight we have a very special guest. And she will be talking to and telling us about what needs to be improved as well as what exists in the world of sexuality. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad to meet you. Yeah, you, you too. You too. Yeah. I love the way you answer your emails. Really? I love to honor people. I think it's beautiful. I, I love it's love. It's, it feels good. It feels good. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, let's start the show. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi. Well, welcome back to Kiara Nation. Kiara Nation loves her guests. And today's special guest, um, by the way, peop, uh, <laughs> Tina from Tina Heels is co-hosting with me again. And we have the most excellent, most beautiful and wise, <laughs> Anyaya Sophia, verdad? Yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I kept going, and I, yeah. <laughs> but I got it, and I'm happy, and I'm happy to have you here. I'm happy to have Tina on the show again as well. Let's proceed. Yes. And tell us a little about yourself, and Naya, please. Well, um, I think I say something like I'm a storyteller, uh -huh. I'm an author, I'm a mystic. Uh -huh. Um. I'm part fairy, I'm very <laughs> playful, I'm very uh, spontaneous, I like to experience, I like to explore, um, yeah, that's me, and I live in the French Pyrenees, well, so I'm in a very different part of the world. Okay, tell me a little bit about that. Well, it's, to me, it's a very special land. This land was once its own land known as Occitania. It wasn't part of France. It was very independent. And it was known for being, because it still is, very heretical. So a lot of free thinkers down here. Yeah. And it's very famous for uh, two really terrible crusades in the medieval times. Mm. When the Church of Rome was trying to extinguish a group of people called the Cathars, who could well have been the descendants, the spiritual descendants of Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. But what we do know is there was a lot of healing going on down here. Oh. There was a lot of joy going on down here. There was a lot of freedom going on down here. <laughs> Beautiful. And, Beautiful. Uh, there's, a, there's a prophecy that says in 700 years we shall return, and that expires next year. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so 1321, uh, a great prophecy was spoken, and of course, 2021 is 700 years. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, so we're wow. gearing up for some change of events. <laughs> you know, you know, it's interesting. Uh, you know, that's beautiful because it's time we come out of the darkness. I was just talking to my mom because we have similarities in... um with with the whole independent and um we were holistic and um we were in s holistic sciences and so forth and we were in the miskitu in the miskitu nation yeah and then um rome gave away some of our land to all the other new five republics because before those five republics even existed that there was um it was the Miskito Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um Great Britain was our protectorate and then they when the Panama came out came to fruition and the United States became a country, then we were no longer of use. So they created all kinds of things to dispose us from our from our natural resources. Mm -hmm. And what I was telling my mom was that um yeah, people claim that we're an advanced society, and the only advancements, if they're advancements that we've made, is technological, maybe scientific, but even the scientific world is behind had they not 
have wiped out and listened to the indigenous people, and that is all indigenous people of our lands. They knew stuff, and we would have been far more advanced. Yes. You know? True. Yeah. yeah. I agree fully. Yeah, so um, that's why um, I'm so happy to talk to you because I love, I, w I read your Return to the Sacred Prostitute a long time ago, and it's funny because um, I was like, wow, but I didn't have the show. <laughs> so, and I didn't even have the idea of the show. Um, someone else came with the, this show idea to me, my um, friend. And um, so... When I'm I'm looking at it now and I'm reading it and I'm like, wait a minute, is that the same person? And wow, you're the same person. And it was Tina who sent me an email. She said, look, look. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I want her on. So I wanted to, um, you, you, you wrote that article. And what was most interesting to me was the part about um, the virgins. Can, can you tell us more about the, the whole origin? the original the original meaning of the virgin yeah well all of this is obviously coming from my own imagination none of it can be proven but it's what i totally carry in my heart as a very powerful palpable memory so with the virgin what i understand what i remember is that these women these temple priestesses, these sexual priestesses, were so completely and utterly in love with the divine, with the source, with the origins, that their devotion was self-sustaining, it was complete, and when they were with a man, woman, or young person, or dying person, or pregnant person, they would just come as a representative of the source. There's no leaking, there's no pulling, there's no manipulation. There's just abundance. <laughs> and when these ladies would have a little off day, because it, after all, we are just human. So when perhaps the woman's energy started to like lower and maybe she went into some kind of melancholic or nostalgic or, or lostness, and this is the bit I love, a, fe a female uh, priestess would notice what's happened to her sister and delight her <laughs> to come back to her full generous nature. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And what I love about it is that it felt so clean, so vertical, but so powerful, mm -hmm. so transformative, so like, like a fiery phoenix. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my memory. Okay, well, your memory, as far as I'm concerned, has a lot of validity to it because as I was explaining to Tina when I first met her, is that I've, when I first got into the adult industry and the um, sex industry, it, I, I was pulling in different areas and, and just tasting and smelling because I had a whole idea. I, I had another energy of what true sexuality is and it's a ritual and it's, and, and it's, it's, it's the whole process. It's not just here, I'm going to do it, but I had to go taste a little bit of everything almost to bring my memory back to what I know it is. You know, it's like a knowing, yes. something you know, something you cannot prove or whatever, but there's a knowing inside of you. And it's amazing because, you know, by going through that 10 years later, 11 or 12 years later, um, I was able to master, and I'm still mastering, I'm still learning more, but I was able to harness that energy and master it and be able to place it and move it and bring it to the people that I do see. So oh, I completely okay. I, I agree with you. <laughs> oh, I remember when I started to share these memories with my friends who, who know me really, really well. And obviously I was quite keen to sort of step into that role of temple priestess. Mm -hmm. But, you know, confession time, 
I've, I'm not really a very potent sexual woman. My thing is kind of like joy and innocence. So <laughs> there's no point me parading around really bringing through that delicious Shakti energy. I couldn't pull it off. So I was saying to my nearest and dearest, wow, I can't wait to step into this. And they were saying, Anaya, but it's not you. Your role <laughs> is the center. Your role is like the high priestess. And I said, are you saying I'm a madam? <laughs> <laughs> and they all just kind of went yeah <laughs> because that was the vision i had i had a vision that there was a, an older woman sat mm -hmm. literally sat in the center of the temple in a in a very profound meditative prayerful you know trance-like state mm -hmm. and sort of like inwardly managing and moving everything. And all around her was the activity. Mm -hmm. And I realize now, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. Um, Tina, um, Tina had, um, she just did a thing on Virgo and she was talking about um, the virgins. Tell us a little bit about that, Tina. We want to uh, straight talk to Anaya about my connection to Mary Magdalene. So uh, I had been born in a Hindu Brahmin family in India, in a Bengali family. So I honestly did not uh, look at Christianity as, as uh, a way to help my life. But I remember it was uh, possibly in my teens that I came across the name of Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. And her, her all saying, uh, I mean, Mary Magdalene Day is 22nd of July, her birthday. So I am born on 23rd of July. So if you take the, the different time difference, I think it comes yeah. about to the same point. So uh, that interested me and also the concept of uh, Mary Magdalene as a tantric Bhairavi to Jesus and not just as a tantric Bhairavi but as an initiator yes. of yes. Uh, great tantric alchemy and, and stuff like that because even if you look at uh, sadhaks like Paramhamsa Ramakrishna when he learned Tantra he had to go to a Bhairavi to get initiated so I sort of look at Mary Magdalene as one such powerful uh, lady and uh, a, a, a yogini if I may say so you know oh, and uh, like, like Babaji's sister Mataji so I have a very profound connection with Mary Magdalene and uh, I have been channeling her in my blogs and on my videos and I've just been doing a lot of uh, meditation and, and lucid dreaming sessions. Yes. So I just wanted to say that, you know, talking to you has been really nice because suddenly uh, I had, uh, I think, found you about a decade ago or so. I, you did not have a Facebook or anything. And I was very interested because of your Magdalene connection. Mm. And, and then out of the blue, YouTube just suggested your video that you shot in your home where you just moved. Uh, I think you did that with another girl. And, and I was like, you know, not going to watch it. But, and I just clicked on it and I watched the whole video. And it was so profound that you're doing this work and that your connection to Mary Magdalene, that to me is profound. So you are a, a yogini of the Mary Magdalene sect. Mm -hmm. And that to me is, is a very big thing because I am also a tantrika. I come from a family of Kali worshippers and, you know, like my family was brought down by the Pala Kings to be the first Brahmins to pray to the goddess Kali. Wow. So I have a very close connection to Tantra and Kriya Yoga. So Mary Magdalene to me is one such yogini who deserves uh, to be spoken about more, who deserves to be, you know, just spoken about more. Beautiful, so, Tina. Yeah. So that oh, was how I found you. <laughs> I, I love your imagery because your 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 headband looks like a little gold <laughs> halo. <laughs> yeah, you look you look really look amazing. 
Okay, so, so that, was, uh, that was the best part about you, and uh, I I really wish you all the best in uh, spreading the name of Mary Magdalene and, and being able to. Interestingly, Kiara and me did a show with Julie Bindel on the birthday of Mary Magdalene. Do you remember that I even mentioned that that today is the birthday of Mary Magdalene? I did. I I left it. I left it. I left it on the um. I didn't unedit that. Yeah. So I wanted just to I wanted to because I'm oh, that was the next thing I was going to get to Mary Magdalene. So I just wanted to get your your piece. Uh, there's a there's a there's a reason for my uh, for my questioning. Yes, um, yes, yes. Yeah. So I wanted you to go just to give us a little on the Virgo when you were talking about the moon okay. in Virgo, right? So, and, so and the we archetype were, of the Virgin yes, is yes, uh, uh, meaning. Is for me uh, a wise woman who has awakened a Kundalini Shakti, and the Kundalini is the serpent, is is the key, you know, the the, the prana that lies coiled at the navel. So, uh, to me, the Virgin is someone who could uh, awaken this. In Tantra, you do this, you know, when the 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 Bhairav and the Bhairavi get together in a process called Metuna, which is sexual union, uh, the Kundalini awakens. So the Virgin are these high priestesses who work with the goddess energy and they surrender to the goddess energy. And these uh, virgins have existed uh, since time immemorial in cultures like Sumer, in cultures like that Babylon, in India, all over the world. And I'm sure in indigenous shamanic cultures, you have women like this who understand the, the secret of the Kundalini and the sacral chakra, which lies just uh, under your navel, just above your vagina. That is the place where alchemy occurs. That is your creative energy. So with this, this energy, you can create anything. How you said you learn to balance the energy. And, and when you balance that energy, the show came, the, the idea came as to how sacred this work could be, right? So that is what to me is a virgin. A tantrika who understands the alchemy of the kundalini, who who literally, uh, when she sleeps with men, when she engages in the process, she she heals him every single time. You know, that's, so that's, this that's, thing, yeah, like Marvin and, like, and, and they do not belong to any women and any men. That is the key thing. Well, they, they belong do not, to themselves. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's so, it's 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 not it's not a choice through hatred. It is not a, a, a it's not a a because someone doesn't want a child or someone doesn't want a family or so forth. Because um, a child can still be included and still be raised at a strong man or woman by by the female because it is yeah society. Wait, wait a minute. It's it it is the way of nature and i'm not i'm not damning the whole family structure or anything i'm just saying that we've come away from nature where we have women believing that if they don't have a man in their lives they can't raise children and they can't raise strong children because there's no male figure and i think that's an idea patriarchy put into <laughs> into our society because if you look at nature, if you see nature, nature is basically the mother goes out, she hunts, she does everything, she rears. The male of the animals basically just come and do their thing and <laughs> get on to, to the next. Like she mentioned, as, as she mentioned, that the, the joyousness of the whole process, the being in love with the whole process of creation to such a degree that you do not need a person to interface with any longer, to, to feel that e ecstasy. So when Meera Bai was in love with Krishna and she wrote all those beautiful poems to Krishna, Krishna was an ideal, it was a whole universe. 
you know, the divine masculine in all his glory. So these priestesses, these virgins were in ecstatic uh, state. Does that mean that they were not angry or upset? They were, but they could come back to balance again, you know, because they were doing sadhana, they were doing spiritual practices. They weren't holding Still. grudges. No. <laughs> they processed. Yeah, they, they processed. And, 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 it's, and it's true. And although we may not be able to prove or, or, or you prove your memory and so forth, I see it in my own workings, in how I work and so forth. I see it. And then I speculate and I see it in other workers. And um, I basically created this show for a lot of things because there's no talk, real talk about just sexuality as it is a beautiful thing. And I'd like to help for this show to help normalize it or for people to open up their minds yeah. and their hearts to it. Because the more we're against our own sexual nature, the more we are against ourselves because self-loathing comes from not understanding yourself and not understanding that why they call it the core or the coil, like she said, it's because it, all our senses, all our five senses are that. And if we don't understand our senses, we're going to have a really big problem because women even have an issue with breastfeeding because they don't understand what they're feeling because we're so shunned away from sexuality, you know? Yeah. Sorry, we've been talking. I invited you. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Please. <laughs> well, another part of the memory as glorious as as it is comes the the severity of his of it as well. My understanding is that these temples, this way of life, this natural, gorgeous, easy way of life was taken away from us almost overnight in a really severe and ruthless cold way. Sometimes people imagine that it was, you know, the priestesses that were shocked and harmed the most. But my heart goes out to those men as well, because the men only knew that the way to find that God presence was in the arms of a priestess. That was their prayer, that was their forgiveness, that was their salvation. And so when that became forbidden, and heretical these men are just lost you know coming back from the battle or or just you know man's life is so brutal and so so different to ours and so suddenly they've lost they've lost their church you know the the, <laughs> the body being the church right so it was a very brutal time, a very big time of lostness and confusion. And then the church comes, and then the, the one God and the patriarchal God, and then sexuality is now demonized. So yes. that's a very confusing message. The original sin, the original sin and the yeah. whole uh, virgin horror dichotomy, I think that... Uh, Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary, the breakup of the whole, uh, the archetype, yes. the fragmentation, I think that, that's what did it. Yeah, I just did a show with, um, with Katrina K Sisowa. Oh, yeah. She's, she's, a, she's a researcher, and she was telling me about the, you know, whore. They even de de demonized the word whore because it was H-O-R, and it was beloved one. It had... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it went from beloved ones to most hated, <laughs> the most hated ones, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Continue, <laughs> please. Well, um, 
And, you know, and then century upon century upon century, that kind of schism gets deeper and wider. You have spirituality in one hand and sexuality in the other. Yeah. And the two just can't seem to find peace. And then you've got a really, really bizarre... And, and, and the funny part is that the, the, the creative energy is the sexual energy. Yeah. Even in ancient tantric texts, it is the... the, the the sexual energy is the creative energy. Yes. Because, yes. you know, that if you do not know how to transmute it, if you do not know, it's going to, you know, it can result in addiction. But if you know. Oops. Something happened there. Okay, please continue. She'll, she'll get back on in a minute. Well, I mean, to, bring, to come full circle, if, um, you know, like your show, Kiara, mm -hmm. um, you're bringing it full circle. Mm -hmm. You're showing in who you are. I mean, to look at you, to hear you. I've, I've been looking at your, your <laughs> website and, and seeing you doing your thing. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> she's, she's a, you are embodying this complete circle. Oh, that you. sexuality and all of its rawness, all of its depth, all of its wild and un unknown and unpredictable expression can be fully in the realm of healing and blessing and and transforming and 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 mutating even that it added that it is this wild creative force that that is good. It heals, it blesses, it comforts, it opens, it initiates. Yes. Boom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. And um, how do you feel about, I'm going to have another show on this on, on Friday, but I, I really want to get it from um, you, and then I want to get it from Tina, because a lot of people like have invited me. Like, Remember when Ning was really big, N-I-N-G, the, the dot com? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So a lot of people would invite me to their thing, and I'm just like, Miss Open. <laughs> and they're like, we don't want you here. <laughs> We're not here. We're not here for prostitution. I'm like, dude, you asked me what I did. I didn't say I did that. I didn't even call it that. Mm -hmm. um, so so what are you, why are you inviting me? I put it, you know, you guys should have read my bio. I put in there everything, you know, that I, I'm doing. And this one thing that said, yes, we're open, we're, we're, we're a spiritual, uh, Ning spiritual something, and, and, and come and welcome. So I'm like there and everything, and they're like, get your ass out of here. Sex is, you know, we don't want nothing to do with sex. And how do you, how do you, how do you respond to people that said that sexuality is not, is not a spiritual thing? Oh my God, that's just weird, <laughs> right? That's just, but it, but a yeah. lot of people believe that, like like eighty percent. I'm saying eighty percent of the sexuality world. is a sin. This is yeah. what the Abrahamic religions have taught them, right? Okay, yeah, but I wanted um, Anaya to answer first. Um, what's the question? <laughs> okay, so the question is, do where do you stand with people? Who are like about eighty percent of, of 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 our global planet, who feel that sexuality is not spiritual. To me, that is a an absolute contradiction, and is completely not true. Sexuality, to to me, sexuality is the great healing current. It is the it is the presence of healing. It is the bed of healing. It can be channeled to heal profoundly, quick, sincerely, and with great depth and, and with great honor and respect. It comes in every possible shade and expression and an embodiment. There will be some who are very graceful, very graceful in their application and expression. And there'll be some who are just full of that shakti. <laughs> And I understand that these little beings are actually born. And so you will notice that your little two-year-old, your little three-year-old is like, oh, <laughs> because they are born to be a tantrika. Mm -hmm. And that might be very graceful and sublime and very, very refined, or it might just be in the body. And sexuality is just oozing out of that person. And it must not be. 
it must not be suppressed. It must be encouraged. You you notice, oh my God, my little three-year-old girl or oh boy is um, showing signs of, uh, of, of being a master in some way. And the very best thing you can do is to guide that one to the right elders, the right teachers who will bring that gift to the surface. Because yeah. we all need a Tantrika in our community. We yeah. all need one that's alive and kicking and available. And yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. I, I thank you for that. And I hope that our audience is listening. It's so important because what happens is with um, this patriarchy and the uh, the whole this whole shaming is we shame that child and we destroy that child inwardly and then that child goes out seeking itself because it has lost what it came into the earth with yes 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 yeah i think this is the work of our age you know what yes. you ladies are up to what i'm up to this is the work of our age is yes. to bring this back into the public arena and just you know just be steady be um committed be disciplined just bring it and bring it and it doesn't matter what anyone says and it doesn't matter what they say about us we just oh, bring it because exactly. what else are we gonna do <laughs> exactly exactly that's how that's how i felt when um sadly when when they when, when the cps they're telling me just sign these papers and um mm -hmm. you know say that you know that this that you're you know basically that a se that the sex industry that i'm in the wrong place and you know like speak badly and and i just it was weird because i i just really felt like i would lose myself if i were to even sell my soul like that just because someone was trying to make me jump through hoops yeah, you know yeah. what i'm saying Yes, um, yeah, and a lot of, because of the oppression and the suppression of my own true self, I had to go find her. And so yeah. I had to go through a whole bunch of things, but I'm glad I did because I can recognize myself in others through, because even if I tasted it just for a little bit, I can see it and I can heal it, you know? <laughs> <laughs>